Good morning. Wow, got a full house. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks for being here this morning. I'm Rhett Power from Forbes, and I'm also the CEO of Accountability Inc. And Jonathan Friedman, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, look, um, you know, you and I have been talking about storytelling. Yeah. And um, I wanted to really start off with um, how does storytelling fit into a, a go-to-market strategy? And I, I know you're going to talk a little bit about what storytelling really means. Right. Yeah, so that's a good question. A lot of time people say the word story, but they keep it a little bit abstract. So let's try to bring it down. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's start breaking down go-to-market. What does go-to-market mean? Well, you, there's a market out there. There's are usually people with a pain that you think you can solve if, if you're a seller. And they're going about their, their day. They're not waiting for you to come, right? They, uh, they will be they're there before you. They will be there after you. So it's your job to go and find them. And they're in different water holes, either digitally or physically. So you need to find them and get them. But then there's the go there. So even if you find them where they are, um, I would argue that you still need to get into their brains, right? And, right. and you need to pierce it. And the thing is, most humans develop a veil of indifference that protects them just to be, just to be able to exist in the modern city. There's so right. many things coming at you, you have to um, be able to filter most of it out. So if you want to get into someone's brain, how do you do it? And I would argue that the story is actually like an, an, a mimetic arrow that you can use in order to pierce that veil. Uh, what do I mean with mimetic arrow? So everyone here knows memes, right? Uh, you probably shared a few just today. Right. Um, a meme is a play on the word gene, uh, and it's really the same as a gene that gets, uh, there's evolution kind of working on it. So right. a, a, a meme has staying power within a brain, and it has replication power to another brain. And you can actually measure that stuff. So um, a meme has that staying power, but it's, it's more like mimetic sugar. Um, a story is, uh, uh, is of substance, and you can see the mimetic value of it if I, think, if I tell you, hey, tell me about a Disney story from a movie you saw 15 years ago, you'd probably be able to still recall that story uh, to, to the T. But if I, if I give you an example of something with a low mimetic value, for example, I, I, I read out my phone number to you, I, I think if I ask you 10 minutes later, you probably won't remember it. And even if you do and you say you tell it to your wife, she'll forget it. And, and so the ability for a phone number, digits, just did it to um, exist for a while and then replicate is very low versus a story and um, stories have been used for eons, right? Before writing was invented, stories, folklore, is essentially stories that traveled from brain to brain over the eons, over time. So you want to use that um, evolution perfection to get your point across to if you're selling to other humans. And humans are still buyers you know, until GPT-3 takes over. Uh, that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> You know, then why do we screw it up so often? Like, when we build a product, uh, why is showcasing a product really so complex? Why, why, why do we spend so much time on the product itself and then and really f often fail at telling the story? Right, so I think, I think my main message with this is saying, hey, you're not alone. Uh, the best storytellers, Steve Jobs and, and Bill Gates and, and, and Elon Musk, right? They had embarrassing demos that failed on stage bigger than this. And they're amazing storytellers, the best of the generation. Um, and it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a product guy, so I celebrate products. I love products. And the ability, the, the, the fact that you can't showcase the amazing and that it fails, it hurts me. But I'll say there are three main reasons why showcasing products is, is, is tough. One, what, um, do you, what do you mean by showcasing? Showcasing is, means uh, bringing people into that world, explaining okay. what a software piece actually does and what it can mean for them. Okay. So that's showcasing to me. And, and it's rough because of three main reasons. First of all, software is just complex, right? You're talking hundreds of screens, if not thousands of screens. And it usually tries to bottle up a certain business process. So it's abstract. It's not like um, going to a, um, a clothing shop and buying a shirt. A, sh a shirt is visceral. You can touch it, feel it, see it, uh, put it on your body, and kind of take it in. It does one thing. Software is usually complex. So it's already a complex beast, and it's abstract. So that's, that's one. Two, uh, products are protected from the outside world. They have security walls around them. You provision users, and the, the data inside is precious. Um, so you can't just like, open it up. Uh, if you think about it, a, a product that's fully open is actually a website. 
So most products are locked, and those walls are great for security, not good for showcasing. And number three is that products are built for user in mind. So you're trying to kind of take away degrees of freedom to make sure the user uses the product correctly in a certain point in time. But when you're showcasing, that actually works against you because you're trying to give a bird's eye view of what a product could mean. And you're trying to sometimes accelerate time, show what it could get to, not the first day when you're setting everything up, but what could it look like in a year for you in terms of value. So right. all these three things, uh, products are built for that. And uh, you guys, as storytellers, as people that want to showcase, um, it's, it's a hard time. And there weren't any tools to do that really until now. So there's a reason it fails, and the best of the best fail. And it's not because they're not good enough. It's just because it's very, very hard. What is, how do you build bridges? How, and why is it important to build bridges between buyers and sellers? So you start with a good story. And a good story is, first of all, it has to be authentic. It has to be authentic asking yourself, hey, why am I doing what I'm doing? Hopefully, each one of you has a good reason to wake up in the morning and you believe in what you're doing. So once you have that authenticity, you have that North Star, um, you, uh, you, can, you need to uh, standardize it, and you need to scale that story up. And stories, if, they, if done right, they evoke emotions. So they don't only have mimetic value, meaning they can stay in people's mind and travel between people's mind. They also evoke emotions and show that you're a human, that you understand. And people see that in other people, and they connect. So not only the retention, but also the humanistic part comes out of it. And if you do it right, it essentially helps uh, build that bridge between the two. So how can um, how do we how do we get better at telling these stories? Like, um, is there a way to test whether a story works well uh, before you sort of go to market with it? I know we test our beta test our products all the time, right? But how do we test our stories? How can we do that better? Well, I truly believe a good story needs to be authentic, first of all. Especially in this day and age, there's so much content out there. People are drawn to authenticity. So find your North Star. And if you're struggling to find it, take, I know, take a retreat, go, go deep. It's, it's usually within you first. Once you have it within you, make sure you scale it, right? Even if you have the most amazing, authentic story, you still need to be able to tell a lot of people within your company, you need, to, you need to be able to scale it and get to a lot of people at some kind of scale. Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a second part. Um, and then I would argue you need substance uh, to tell a good story. Mm -hmm. um, there are things like I, I talked about memes, but for example, if I say the word sex right now on stage, I get a lot of attention. People are looking at what, what is he saying? But if I don't explain why I said this and I have substance behind it, that's not a story. That's a gimmick. And you can get away with a gimmick or two. That's fine. But over time, you need to build sub substance within your story and make sure that you're, telling, that you're giving people more than just mimetic sugar. You actually give them something that's nutritious, that helps them, and is of value to them. So that's very important. Yeah. Well, so in terms of sales leaders, um, for, the, for the sales people out there, uh, it, how do you can? It seems to me like that's a really useful tool in sales, being able to tell the story really well. How can we do better at that? How can sales leaders train their sales teams to be better at telling the story? A very good question. So think about stories as you know they're, they're timeless. They have a, they have a plot. They have an arc. They have a hero, right? So think in those terms. And for example, the, the main thing I see where people go wrong is they talk about our product, my thing, right? Your, your prospect is the hero of the story. You're the storyteller. And you're building a stage for them that's, 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 that's very compelling. But you need to put yeah. them in, in the center. Um, I argue that uh, I have a saying that, you know, that, that the best demos are it's like looking in the mirror. That means that you can reflect your prospect your prospect's image within your product. That's your job as a seller. It means you need to do two things. One is know thy buyer, understand them, and you need a lot of empathy for that. So understand them well and understand what, that, what they're looking and not what they look like today, what they would want to look like. What, what is their best image, right? And then take that and paint it within your product. So know thy product is the second piece. And if you can then, you're the bridge connecting thy product to your your prospect and then make them see themselves in the best light within your product. 
And that was very hard to do. We talked about the complexity of products. With, with modern uh, demo tools, you can actually do that. You can tell a story, and you're not confined by all these technical limitations you had in the past. And, um, and now you can do that on scale as well. Yeah, I think we often fail, particularly in the sales side, with when we, when we put ourselves at the center of that story and not our customer, right? And I think that's a really important point, a good takeaway, I think. Um, Talk a little bit about storytelling in terms of a PLG strategy. Right. So PLG is, is older age um, and still not super well defined. But I would say PLG um, product-led growth. Right. It's um, essentially you're doing you're taking away that help you can get from a human telling the story. Yeah. And salespeople are good storytellers. I mean, you you select for that. Right. So you take people that are naturally good, and in a PLG motion. You take them away from the process, not completely. There's, there's sales in PLG. Don't write angry emails uh, for me, please. I, I completely get it. But for, this, but for this point, you're essentially taking a lot of that human assist, and you transfer it to the product to do the heavy story lifting. So the good news is that you get a lot of scale from it, right? Because you don't need humans in every interaction, and you, you put that, that, that burden on your product. The, the bad news is that the product needs to carry that burden, so you essentially need to do a lot more work there. Um, another piece of good news is that um, humans know how to do it. If you think about the best storytelling products, are probably video games. Right? You usually you get put into a world, uh, sometimes without any explanation, and you kind of look around, you start to understand what's going on, and you make like baby steps, and you get feedback, and you learn your way through. So if you want to do PLG and you, want to, you, you need to understand that you need to put the storytelling within your product very deeply, uh, and you need to understand where people come uh, to you from, what they know, who they are, and you need, you're taking the human aspect away. So make sure your product carries that weight and that you're very thoughtful on how you do it and that you add a lot of elements from the video game world uh, into, this, uh, into this motion, essentially, to get it right. Talk a little bit about demo stack. And, and what the product does. I mean, I'm curious how that can help everybody here in the audience uh, be better at, at, at delivering their story. Right. Um, so DemoStack was really built because of pain I had when I wanted to showcase a product I built in a, in, a, in, a, in a previous company. I was sitting there, and I could not tell the story of my product. I'm very passionate. I was building this whole thing. And every time we tried to build a demo environment, and it proved to be so difficult. I just couldn't uh, tell the story within, within the demo. We, you know, we built, we, initially, we showed our real production uh, a place. Uh, and, but you know, there's data in there that you cannot show. We actually have a big, uh, a big announcement today about data and how you can get by that. But I had data in there, so I couldn't show that. When we had a fake customer, we did Pied Piper. We put him in. It was empty. So I could not tell the story. I had the product, but it was super empty. Uh, demo stack essentially allows you to get by all these uh, blockers all the stuff that we talked about, about the complexity of actually showcasing product, and lets you tell a story on top of your product. So what we do, essentially, is create a, spin up a demo environment for you in about five minutes that essentially captures your entire product. So we copy the entire front end of your product, and then we allow you to edit it like a Wix or like a Squarespace and tell the, everything you want on, that, on your own product without needing to go to all that back end complexity that bogs you down. So for storytellers, that heaven, because you can really reflect the buyer in every interaction. And you can go to the demo faster. More people can tell the product story. And essentially, the, the product breaks through to these walls that we talked about, the security and data walls and the complexity walls. And you can finally bring it to the market and you know, tell a story behind it and, and, and on, on scale. So, so it sounds like it's pretty easy to use. Can you walk us through sort of onboarding and using, using the product? Yeah. So um, when, you, uh, when you get demo stack, what you do is you go into your own product. Essentially, you have like a browser that you go in. Um, you log into your product, and then you give a demo of your product within the demo stack app. And by doing that, we capture the entire front end of your app. And so you get a, a replica, right, what we call a clone. Uh, and that clone sits, sits there, and now it's, it's disassociated from your complex back end that only your R&D can touch. So once you have that separation, finally you can uh, stand on top of it and you can start editing now. We have all these capabilities. So you can edit. You can share it with prospect before a call, after mm -hmm. a call. 
Uh, during a call, of course, uh, you get full analytics, so you can see if you send it out, if people are going in, if, how they're using it, if they're showing it to their boss, to their colleagues. And you can also understand how your people are demoing. So finally, it's like unlocking this black box of what it means to go through product. So this is a, a, a great sales team tool. Does it track data? Can you, does, it, does it collect data from who you're showing it to and, and how often they've seen it? Does it? Do you get analytics from it? Yeah, the analytics is a big part. Uh, and because, you know, essentially, you know, a lot of people probably are familiar with Gong, which did that for calls. So you used to have all these calls, and you kind of don't know what you're, what you're talking about, and you have to write extensive notes. Um, so I would argue that the, you know, now you have tools like, like Gong and others, and, and, but I would argue that the demo is really it's the highlight of every commercial conversation, first of all. It's kind of the thing that is the climax of that commercial conversation, but it's still a black box. I could ask any um, VP sales or sales leader here a bunch of questions they wouldn't know how to answer, like how many demos do you do per deal? Uh, what is, how, how long is your, is, is, your, is your demo? How do your best uh, salespeople demo versus, uh, versus the worst? Uh, what is your killer feature in each demo for different buyers, different, um, uh, different segments of your market? And people would not know how to answer that. That shows you it's, it's, it's a black box. And we're, we're going to unlock that black box and give you full visibility. And that's, that gives you the power to scale your storytelling because you measure what, what's working or what's not. What's not. So in, in that way, because my next question, that was sort of a good feeder into the next question. Uh, you know, we've talked about the importance of storytelling here. How does the, how does the platform help us get better at that? Uh, and, and you just kind of answered it, but is, can you go deeper into that? Yeah, so first, it helps you standardize your demo. So if you have a sales engineer leader or VP sales or anyone who kind of understands, like, okay, what is this company about? What are we trying to do? Uh, they can then bottle up a demo, standardize it. And so when you come, if you're a seller joining that company, first you have a demo that's ready, that's tested, and you can go to that's ready for you, doesn't have all these technical limitations out there. So already you're well equipped. Right? If we talked about before how showcasing was like, hey, just show the product. What's the problem? You, ha you built it, so just show it to me. But we, we kind of went deeper and we saw that it's not really possible. So once you prepare uh, a demo, you have something that's set that we know that this showcasing helps a certain segment understand the value, you're already equipping your people with the right thing. Uh, then as a seller, you can make easy modifications, right? So we talked about reflecting your buyer. So e the easiest reflection is, hey, put in, your, put in their picture. You can take a quick glance at their LinkedIn and understand a lot about them. Um, so you can put their picture, their, 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 their information, and kind of so they already see their image. They feel like as if they're using it. And then the third part is all the stuff we talked about with analytics, measuring yourself, and be able to also avoid all these lockdowns that the product has. So you can share it via a link outside, and you can so you don't have to provision users and have all these protections, all these issues. You can actually kind of scale that sort of thing. You can put it on your website. You can send it in a mass email. You can send it on a targeted email. Mm -hmm. It gives you a lot of um, tools to be able to not just bottle up what you're trying to do, uh, bottle up that complexity of a product into a cohesive story, but also scale up and, um, and se send it out um, in, a, in a meaningful way to the market. And it seems like it, what, what, what I like about that is it seems like it, you really do get some feedback on what's working when, when what's not in that story, and I think that's really important. Um, the, the, sort of the last question I had for you is, how does storytelling and, and how can DemoStack help you with deal velocity? Yeah, so we talked about the mimetic value of a story. So first, if you have that story, you pierce that veil of indifference. So you need to connect and, and, and you evoke the emotions and empathy. So you connect with your prospective buyer. So that's the first step. Um, going between barriers of different companies is very hard and doing that on scale is very hard. So but once you have that, um, the mimetic value also helps us so that your buyer, your prospect, if they're convinced, they can actually talk about this in their organization, right? Usually software is very expensive and complicated as we discussed. So it's usually not one person deciding if it's a big deal, especially there are multiple people. So the mimetic value is not just getting across, it's also helping them propagate the message within their organization and being able to, equipping them to be your extensive right. storyteller um, helps that travel faster and better within their organization. 
And then essentially you take down, as a good seller, you take down the cognitive load of the understanding of what it means to be using your product, the value it brings. So if you do that, the cognitive load is, low, is, is lowered. Uh, buyers get it faster. They can communicate it internally faster. And essentially, the buying decision comes, can come faster because you're not running into all these issue, issues and barriers, and, and, and you just have something that flows between all the brains of the people that are the decision makers. Um, so of course, that accelerates deal velocity. And I'm, th that's just talking about uh, regular calls. Now, if you take this and you and finally put the product, kind of turn it inside out, instead of having the walls guard the product, you can showcase the product outside of the walls. You can put it on your website in a certain way. So you can put that replica, the clone, on the website. And more people can interact with it without any danger, because it's not the real thing. It's, it's a clone. Uh, they can already interact with it on their own. So suddenly, you can create all these self-serve um, experiences where people can educate themselves, experience your product before they even talk to you. So that gives you an additional scale. Um, so you, and, and, and the last piece is that doing this, you can just train everyone in your company to be a storyteller. Obviously, sales are the main suspect. They, they do that for a living. But marketing obviously tells stories just in different mediums. You have partners. How do you educate your partners to tell the story of your company and to be able to sell it? Um, you know, product, they need to tell internal stories. They build something, they discover it. It's, they, it's a big process. And how do they communicate that to the broader company? I would even argue HR needs to tell stories to candidates. Right. Why would you join a company that you don't know how their product looks like? It's the heart and soul of every company. So you can even equip them to tell it. And of course, the CEO and the execs tell stories on stages or to investors or on TV. Uh, so everyone can be a storyteller if they're well equipped and if it's done right. And that's, that's the power of this thing. So I didn't tell you the truth. I have one more question. <clears throat> OK. All right. So in one minute, we have one minute left. Um, what is, what's one thing you want to leave to the audience? What's that? What's one thing you want to leave to the audience? One, one thing that they can take away. Be, be true to yourself. Uh, I think that's the best fuel you have. Authenticity is valued. Um, storytelling and all the stuff I talked about, having gimmicks and memes can be manipulated, right? And it helps you want to get attention of people. But when you get attention, attention is so precious. Consciousness is, and, and, and attention that, that, that is a part of it, it's so precious. If you get people's attention, use it right, use it ethically, and give them substance. Um, so sugar is okay, but a, a little bit of that. You can't survive on sugar. So have substance, have authenticity, and when you tell a, a story, be real about it, and use attention sparsely and well. Jonathan?